This is Luke with Digital Trends, and today I've got a review of the brand new Surface Book 3 from Microsoft, and this is the 15-inch model. And I really think this might be the most interesting laptop in the entire Surface family. Here's why. Now the Surface line has never been about power. I'm not saying that's always been a weak point, it's just not the focus. The Surface is really all about innovative new designs that combine tablet and laptop in new form factors and new experiences. And the Surface Book 3 continues to do that still. But that does put this laptop in particular in kind of a weird position because Microsoft touts this, the 15 inch model, as having powerhouse performance or a workstation-like performance. So, I mean, is that really true of this thing? I mean, it's a pretty thin laptop. And like I said, it puts that two-in-one design first. This unit looks pretty much identical to the first Surface Book and the Surface Book 2. Nothing on the outside has really changed. Still has that kind of soft light gray exterior. It has the dynamic fulcrum hinge, which leaves that awkward little space in between the two halves of the laptop when you close it. It's all really unique and it's kind of become an iconic design in the small little world of the Surface. And none of that has changed. What has changed is the internals. And here you're getting an updated 10th gen Intel processor and a, an NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti for your graphics. Now I'll admit, when I first heard about this laptop and saw the spec sheet, I was a little disappointed and a little skeptical at Microsoft's claims that this has powerhouse performance. It uses the same 15 watt U-series processors that you get in small little laptops like the XPS 13 or like the 13.5 inch version of this same laptop, the Surface Book 3. So not only does that cut some of the power out of this laptop, it also limits the amount of cores you get because those processors are limited to just four cores and eight threads, whereas those 45 watt processors that are in, you know, kind of thicker, bigger, more powerful laptops, those go all the way up to eight cores and 16 threads. And what that means is that the processor specific performance of the Surface Book 3 is pretty limited. Options like the XPS 13 or even the 13 inch MacBook Pro, that new one, both of those are gonna be slightly more powerful computers, at least in terms of the processor. I found that out not only in benchmarks, but also in applications like Handbrake that exclusively use the CPU. This thing is way behind those other laptops, despite how large it is. And that's really the pickle that Microsoft has been put in because when you see a 15 inch laptop, I expect some extra power there, not just a bigger screen. Well, fortunately, Microsoft does have an ace up its sleeve, which is where this whole review has been going because the interesting design of the Surface Book 3 with the, the detachable tablet, which is really just the screen of this laptop, there also comes with it an interesting internal design that can contribute to some really good performance. And specifically what I'm talking about is that the GPU here, again, the GTX 1660 Ti, is located in the base of the laptop, whereas all the other components are up here in the tablet. Of course, that makes sense. When you remove the tablet from the rest of the base, you wanna still be able to do things with it. But when you attach it to the base of the laptop, you get that extra power from that graphics card. And what's cool is because that GPU has so much air to breathe, it's not you know, in the same physical space as those other hot components, it can actually be pushed really hard. And I saw that in a number of different tests that I did. I'll start with probably the most impressive thing, which was a video rendering test I do in Premiere Pro with all these powerful laptops, or at least laptops that claim to be powerful. It's a two minute video clip, 4K, and basically I export it into ProRes 422 and kind of see how long it takes. And to my complete surprise, the Surface Book 3 finished this test in under five and a half minutes, which is really, really fast, especially given where my expectations were at. Now I've tested a couple laptops that are faster than this, like the XPS 15 or a couple other thicker laptops with eight core processors and discrete graphics. But I gotta say, I'm really impressed by how this system can push the GPU to accomplish certain tasks like video editing and video rendering. Options like the Razer Blade or the MacBook Pro are nowhere near this fast. It's really, really impressive. And of course, powerful graphics also make for a great gaming experience, which the Surface Book 3 surprisingly delivers. The jump from the GTX 1060, which is what the Surface Book 2 used, up to this uh, 1660 Ti proves itself to be a pretty meaningful leap ahead. 
I had no problem getting up to around 60 frames per second in games like Battlefield 5 or Fortnite, and that's with settings maxed and resolution at 1080p. But beyond performance, there's really not much else that's new here, and that might be a problem for Microsoft. This is the fourth year of this exact same chassis that they're using, and I'm not gonna say that it's getting outdated or starting to feel stale, it's just, I remember when this design first came out and it really, really was captivating and really interesting what Microsoft was doing with this whole, you know, fulcrum hinge and the tablet and all that. And I, and I wish that they would bring some of that innovation and experimentation into the future of the Surface Book line because I'm interested in what they'll do next. But what we have today is still a really solid laptop two-in-one type experience. Obviously you have the soft silver light gray exterior, the fulcrum hinge, and a really, really great typing and touchpad experience. This is one of my favorite keyboards on a laptop, primarily because the keycaps stick out of the chassis a little bit, and that gives a really nice tactile feel to the typing. And the touchpad is glass, it's excellent. Wish it was a little bit bigger. You could definitely fit it on the uh, keyboard deck of this laptop, but I'm not gonna complain because it's one of the better touchpads you can get on a laptop. Now, the 15 inch screen is definitely one of the highlights of the Surface Book 3. It's really sharp and crisp. The contrast is really, really high and color accuracy is really, really low. My one nitpick about the Surface Book 3 screen is the color gamut. I wish it was a little bit wider. It's not quite up to par with something like the MacBook Pro. And, you know, that might be kind of a, uh, a problem if you're a uh, professional photo editor or something like that. But I really think for the majority of people, the screen on the Surface Book 3 is a big, big highlight. And then there's the tablet experience. Now, this is a laptop first Surface device, more than any other Surface device is. Unlike the Surface Pro or the Surface Go, those are kind of tablet first devices. This is a laptop first. So the tablet experience is more supplemental than anything. And that's proven mostly by even just the battery life. You're only gonna get a few hours of battery life on this thing before you have to plug it in and recharge it. You know, it's probably good enough for watching a movie before bed, but really nothing more than that. It also works well as a nice little clipboard. You can use it with the Surface Pen. Of course, the Surface Pen doesn't come bundled in with the device, but if you have one or you wanna buy one, it does work well as a clipboard because the tablet itself is pretty light. It's only 1.8 pounds, a little heavier than an iPad Pro, but given that it's a 15 inch screen, it really does feel light for the size of it. Now I'm not gonna get too far into the Windows 10 tablet experience because we all know that I'm not a big fan of it and there's a lot that Microsoft could do with it. They haven't really touched it in years. Now obviously they're working on a lot of future stuff that could resolve this issue. Windows 10X, even this week at Build, they announced a thing called Project Reunion that could be Another attempt to um, resolve this whole app unification problem that they have on their platform. But for now, this is the, the experience that we get when you buy the Surface Book 3 today. And it's, it's really not great. I mean, suffice to say, it's no iPad experience in terms of gesture support and app ecosystem and things like that. I can forgive it a little more with the Surface Book 3 than I can with the other Surface devices because again, this is a laptop first device and the tablet is more supplemental than anything. The port selection is really where you start to see how old this chassis is because you're getting some kind of legacy ports. You have two USB-A ports, a single USB-C port, a full-size SD card slot, and the Surface Connect dock. Now the thing that's missing here is obviously Thunderbolt 3. Just about every other laptop that uh, is at this price range or really even a lot cheaper than this includes Thunderbolt 3 these days. And I don't know why you would release a laptop that's supposed to be performance driven that doesn't have the best fastest ports available that's just kind of going to be something that these surface products lack for now because microsoft doesn't really seem interested in supporting it for whatever reason and we need to talk about battery life because for some reason on the surface book 3 i'm not getting as good of battery life as i would have on the surface book 2. The size of the battery hasn't changed there's still two of them one in the base and one in the tablet and that usually resulted in really, really great battery life. We're talking like 20 hours of video playback, um, but this is getting nowhere near that. I'm getting around eight to eight and a half hours of daily usage, which is enough to get me through a workday, but it's really nowhere near what the Surface Book 2 could do. And my guess is that there's some kind of a firmware problem here. I reached out to Microsoft. I haven't heard back yet about this problem in particular, 
but I'm hoping that it can get resolved because there's really no reason this device shouldn't be getting as much battery life as the previous version did. And finally, we really, really need to talk about price because this 15 inch version starts at $2,300. Again, that comes with the GTX 1660 Ti in the configuration. It comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, but it only comes with a 256 gigabyte SSD, which is really, really painful for that price. Even the MacBook Pro starting at $2,400 comes with a 512 gigabyte SSD. So I really don't know the justification for that because um, I really think if you're spending this much on a device, you should have enough storage for your creative applications and your big files and whatnot. To bump up to 512, you actually have to also add another 16 gigabytes of RAM to get up to 32, and that's not really needed for everyone either. So there are some just kind of frustrating limitations in terms of what configurations you can get. Of course, you can also go down to the 13.5 inch version of the Surface Book 3, which is a, you know, a totally adequate laptop. It doesn't have the same performance capabilities, but if you like this design, you like the idea of the tablet, and the great battery life and all that, um, that's also an option for you. Now, the 15-inch Surface Book 3 is really still a niche device, especially at that price and with some of those limitations in terms of like the processor and some of those configurations, it's really not for everyone. But I don't think Microsoft would debate me on that. I think they would tell you that themselves. It's a unique one-of-a-kind experience that you can really only get in the Surface Book line. But what I've learned after testing this thing is that there are some practical uses for the Surface Book 3, especially with that performance bump that it gets and that GPU under heavy crank. It's really impressive the kinds of things you can do with a laptop this thin and this kind of experimental. Two-in-ones are not really typically known for performance. Like I said up top, none of the Surface devices are. And what Microsoft has succeeded at doing with the Surface Book 3 is bringing a new level of performance to this device that I didn't think was really possible in a 2-on-1 like this one. So should you go out and buy it? If you're looking strictly for a just video editing machine, something like an XPS 15 is a, a much better, more reliable choice that uh, doesn't have so many different factors and limitations to what you can do with it. But I think, again, the Surface Book 3 does something that no other laptop can really do, and that makes it unique and stand out and one of a kind in the choices of laptops that are out there. So I hope that Microsoft continues to innovate on this product and eventually we'll see the next leap ahead in terms of experimentation and form factor. But for now, the Surface Book 3 is a very capable laptop, surprisingly powerful for what it is.